So Daryl, over the years you've worked a lot in conjunction with a fellow by the name of Mike Palmer. I believe you've got an online presence or several online presences with him, but you've also done a number of speaking engagements around Australia. They've been going on for a number of years. Are they continuing? Can people meet up with you or speak to you in person? Absolutely. Thanks for the question, Robert. The um, Know Your Rights group, <clears throat> I was invited to as a guest to speak at the radio show <clears throat> that um, Mike uh, through Know Your Rights was doing on a weekly basis uh, and eventually that led to, I, I mean I've known Mike for a number of years, he was coming to my community law resource group meetings years ago where I was just teaching people the Australian Constitution. Uh, <clears throat> after the radio show we sort of went uh, a bit deeper, we thought let's take this around in the form of a seminar because we've got a number of particular subjects we can cover that people need to know and people need to sort of take on board in order to, um, I suppose in a sense, politically protest against the way the system had been running since the 1970s in particular here in Australia. So we um, chose to, we sat down and worked out <coughs> the formula for the seminars and, and we took that utilising the um, Know Your Rights group profile on social media uh, and Mike's work with um, a group called Aussie Speeding Fines. Um, <clears throat> he managed to get um, a appearance on a Channel 9 current affair program a couple of times uh, which sort of started him off uh, uh, down this path of um, no, getting people to know their rights. <clears throat> Once we we sort of incorporated Aussie speeding fines with Know Your Rights plus we found ourselves teaching people about uh, the straw man, the um, person per se, and also how to go about uh, conducting their banking. Um, and doing all of this well within the confines of the law, as the law prescribes, um, but at the same time standing up as a, a sort of political protester to a resistance to what the governments um, at all levels were doing here in Australia. So rather than throw sticks and stones at the system, we were sort of encouraging people to take on board what the law prescribes and to call out those involved in levels of government uh, for their authority. And of course that's pretty much led us to where we are today. Um, but of course Mike had spent a number of years fighting um, the banks in the Supreme Court here in Victoria. Uh, he caused them <laughs> more than enough uh, uh, of a nightmare. He caused a legal bill, I think up around $900,000, um, which they all walked away from. Um, they, they, they sort of all came to an agreement and everyone walked their particular path. So rather than the system be exposed for the corruption, um, they wanted to just get on with it get on with, um, I suppose, undoing people's rights um, with respect to banking away from them. Of course, this led us to uh, encouraging people to set up uh, um, a resistance in the banking system um, using a private foundation. And uh, of course, that got a lot of interest. So. We had a lot of fuel to give people, which caused us to bring about a two-day seminar, so wherever we went. What would be the benefits or advantages in the average person obtaining a foundation of their own? What exactly is involved and, and how does it advance a, a person's purposes? Well. It <clears throat> A foundation, of course, is first and foremost, it's your way of expressing your privacy. Uh, and 
<clears throat> one way of doing that is first to bring about an articles of association. So you give a foundation as such to that foundation. Uh, and then we were able to utilise the paperwork here in, uh, through the banking system here in Australia to <coughs> adopt those articles um, as uh, uh, an entity as such. Uh, so that then that, that, <coughs> that paperwork has a name and that name similar to the way a corporation runs that name has participants and those participants then operate uh, and administrate <coughs> that foundation and register that with the bank and the bank take that on board and issue uh, a debit card accordingly um, but of course they will not recognise that entity to the extent of forwarding any credit. So it's purely on the debit side of the um, uh, banking system. So <clears throat> we, we sort of teach people the ins and outs of that and <clears throat> in particular when it comes to if you're a private contractor uh, in your work um, or if you're an employee for a large or small company, we then also show you through that seminar how to um, use the paperwork that exists within the Australian Taxation Office uh, and how best to adopt that accordingly. Um, it comes back to, <clears throat> because it's a private foundation, it's not publicly registered, so it's a purely a private, uh, operating in private jurisdiction, and of course we have to educate those people in that seminar as to what is private jurisdiction compared to public. And that of course entails the whole straw man um, issue, which, <clears throat> Uh, allows people then a better understanding of why the system is operating the way it is. And this goes right back to the way Parliament bring laws out as well. And this is, we utilise the evidence that's written in our laws to back up uh, the standing that you have as a straw man uh, and how that's how the system see you and accordingly they manipulate you. So. We give the people the choice through those seminars. You know, a lot of people don't take it on. They just sort of go, wow, okay, yeah, I can see it's all there, but, you know, it doesn't really suit me for whatever reason, and that's fine. No one's forcing anybody. We just put all of this information out there. We give them a book, which Mike and I sort of formulated, and we update as we've been doing that circuit around Australia, we've been updating that book because, of course, um, this realm uh, is, is an open door and <clears throat> we just get information coming in through, especially the Know Your Rights radio show, on a, on a weekly basis. And we're consistently learning more and more about what we've been doing. I've been personally doing this for 20 years and I still am taking new stuff on board. It's a fascinating field. Um, the law is, <clears throat> as I said earlier, it is uh, something we all need to get our heads around in order to better administrate, not only for ourselves, but administrate those who are administrating our public services. You know, our health, our roads, our um, our basic infrastructure for our society. We need to get our heads around that whole process and take part in it, not just let it serve you. Uh, and I think John F. Kennedy, <clears throat> when he was president of the United States in the early 1960s, said uh, in one of his famous speeches that, you know, we don't, <clears throat> you, we need you, the people, to come to us. Um, not us feed you. You need to uh, take part in government. Don't just sit back. Uh, and of course what we've seen over the last 50 years is a perfect example of the opposite of what he was asking the American people to do. 
and especially here in Australia, we've had a, a body of law that insists that the people take part in government at all levels, at executive, parliamentary and judicial. Uh, express your will. Utilise each of those arms of government to bring about what it is you are either defending or what you feel should be put forward. Uh, and that's, this is basically the, the message that we're trying to portray through that Know Your Rights show. It's not about, it's not a cult, it's not a, um, we're not telling you what to do. We're giving you the, the fishing pole we're giving you the fishing reel and the line and the hook and the, and the bait. And now go off and do some fishing. And uh, you will learn yourself then uh, how best to deal with a problem that uh, may confront you. And if it's from government, then uh, how better to be prepared.